Welcome back. This time we are going over custom reusable styles. To get started on this tutorial, create a grid with two rows. In the first row, make a stack panel with a text box and a button. And then the second row, make a grid with a button. So let's start with why you might want to use a reusable style. If you have an extremely simple application or prototype, this would suffice just fine if this is all you needed. But as applications grow and they have more and more views and more and more controls, it's way easier and way more effective to apply the same style to all of your controls across either a window or an application or even just a single grid if that means not having to repeat a lot of the work. So let's suppose that our application does have a lot more controls. And let's just copy and paste the text box a couple of times, copy and paste our button. And let's say that maybe our OK button has a slightly different style to it. So let's say that maybe we want the font size to be a little bit bigger. And maybe we want the foreground to be something crazy like lime green. So you can see now that we already have a lot of duplicated code in our UI. And our application is still tiny. If we had tons and tons of views and we decided we wanted to change the look and feel, Say we wanted our text box to have a slightly smaller font size across the board, we would have to find every single text box in our application and change the font size. If we were using a reusable style, we would only have to change the font size one time and it could apply to every text box in our application. So there are a couple of ways that you can use custom styles, but both ways rely on scope. So your scope may be a single grid or a stack panel. It may be a parent grid with lots of children that it applies to. It could be an entire window, or it could be an entire application. Style definitions live in a controls resources. So if we wanted to put it in our window, we would go outside of our grid, inside of our window, and we would say window.resources. And in here, we would add a custom style. The first thing you do when you create a style is define its target type. And in this case, we'll say a text box. So this style is going to apply to all text boxes in our window. So inside of our style, we can add things called setters. And setters, you can define a property. And for that property, you can define a value. Now that property may be, say, width. And that value may be 200. So now we can effectively remove these explicit widths from our text box and they will remain the same width because our style is applied to everything. And now we can go in here, we can duplicate our setters, we can add all of our other common properties, and then we can go and add all of their values. So our height is 40, our font size is 20, and our font weight is light. And now Really all we need to do is basically define a text box and it's going to automatically have all of the things from our custom style. And even better, if we needed to change something about all of these text boxes, we can do it in one place. So say we want these to be 175 instead of 200 and it will change them all. Now that being said, since we've applied one style to all of the text boxes in our window, if we need to override that style in a single control, we can. So this style is applied first, and then whatever style is defined here overrides it. So maybe we want this text box to have everything from this style, but maybe we need it a little bit wider. So we could say width 250, and it would still keep all of these properties, but override the 175 width to 250. This lets you get the most effect from the least amount of work, because you don't have to create multiple common styles. You can just put everything that's common into one, and where they differ, you can just overwrite it. So let's do the same thing for our button. Copy and paste our style. Change the target type to button. Our button width, say we want all of our buttons to be 100 wide, 40 tall. Now things like content and margin are going to be on a per button basis, depending on where they are and what they should say. So we won't have those, but we can keep our font size, but let's say we want it to be maybe 16. So let's go ahead and remove these properties we just styled from our buttons. And let's take a look at what we have. So we have three buttons. We know that these two are application buttons that are going to be random buttons throughout our application, but this button's a little bit different. This button is an OK button. It's specific to the user pressing OK, and we don't want it to look exactly like the other buttons in our application, but we may have a lot of them. So we may need a separate style 
just for an OK button, or maybe even an OK cancel set of buttons. Since we already have a window-wide style for this button, we need to create a style that is specific to this confirmation button and then explicitly use it as the style. So we can copy and paste this style, but instead of target type button being the only property of style that we use, we need to add a key. And to do that, we'll say x colon key equals, and then we'll name it. So we'll call this confirmation button. Now in this style, we know our font size is going to be a little bigger at 20. And if we know this style only applies to a confirmation button, maybe we go ahead and add properties for content and foreground. And that way we can set the content to OK and we can set the foreground to lime green. And now all we need to do is define our button and then you can say style equals open up a set of curly brackets say static resource space confirmation button. So what we have done is we have created a static resource inside of our window resources that is a style and its key is confirmation button. Now anywhere in this window we can use our style which is a static resource confirmation button and now you can see that it is applied separately from this other button style. Okay, so now we know how to create styles that apply to everything and then styles you apply explicitly. Let's revisit what I was talking about before, the scope of your styles. So if you did not want these styles to be applied to every text box or button in your window, maybe you wanted them to be applied only to these text boxes in this particular stack panel, you could go in here and say stack panel dot resources. And instead of adding them on the window level, you could add them in your stack panel resources and they would do the same thing, but again, only for the items in this stack panel scope. So now if we put a text box in this grid level or in this other grid, it would not apply these styles to them. I have found limiting the scope like this useful when there are certain areas that look different than other areas of your application and you want to be able to apply styles across all of that area. However, I find that most commonly, instead of limiting your scope, you want to expand it because usually we don't want our stack panel to have resources and many times we don't even want our window to have resources, but instead we want all of our custom styles to apply across our whole application. That way everything works and looks the same. So what we can do is I'm going to create a folder called styles. Now this folder may live in your project or it may live in a completely different library so that your styles can apply across multiple projects. But for the purposes of this, we will apply it to our single project. So add a styles folder and then go and add new item. And what you want is a resource dictionary. You can search for it at the top here, resource dictionary. I'm going to call the first one text box styles. Now it's going to create me what is called a resource dictionary. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this one and rename it button styles. So now we have two resource dictionaries, one for text box styles and one for button styles. You may have already noticed that these resource dictionaries are .xaml files, meaning you can put XAML code straight in here. And instead of adding these styles to our window.resources, we are going to merge these XAML dictionaries into our applications resources. So to do that, we want to go to our app.xaml and open it up. And it should already have an application.resources tag for us. Inside that, we want to add a resource dictionary. In that resource dictionary, we want to access the resource dictionary dot merge dictionaries. And now in the merge dictionaries, we can actually add our specific resource dictionaries by having the resource dictionary and then a source tag. So first let's add our styles slash button styles dot XAML. So that represents this file. So in the WPF tutorial, the next level is going to be styles. So that's kind of a file path relative to your project. So then we can copy and paste this one and do styles slash text box styles. And what this will do is this will merge all of these resource dictionaries that you add in here into a single resource dictionary and then include that in the resources across your entire application. So let's build this. So now let's go back to our main window. 
And let's take our button styles, cut them out of our window resources, put them into our resource dictionary, save that, back to our main window, we'll cut out our text box style, put that into our text box styles resource dictionary, save that. Now we don't need this windows.resource tag anymore. And you see that in just a second, these popped into their styles without even having to build it. Occasionally you'll need to build it to refresh the designer though. So if it doesn't work for you, just build your project and it will work again. So just like that, we have separated our styles out. We can apply them globally across our entire application or in a smaller scope if we want to. And we have the ability to explicitly define a style for a control wherever we want to, all while limiting the work that we have to do on each control and making this very manageable, very maintainable, and very reusable. Next up, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into styles, overriding a style and using its control template. So thank you for watching everybody. I really appreciate you. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Happy coding, and as always until next time, take care.